has a fatal fascination for women. He is wonderfully handsome. He is superbly talented. He is so tall and good looking. Women cannot resist him. They become his slaves, no matter where he happens to be. And the secret is that he can make the woman of his choice laugh. And they do tell me, those who know about these things, that the great gift with a woman is to be able to make her laugh. Because while she's busy laughing, she doesn't notice what else you're going to. <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Mr. Billy Connolly. <laughs> What's all that about handsome and stuff? I meant every word of it, Billy. Oh, I'm delighted to I hear I wanted it. to give you a little build-up for yourself. Where in the name of God did you get the rig out? Just a minute. You've had people on here painted blue and you didn't say a word to them. <laughs> A dozen of them were dressed as a dragon. And you turn up in my suit. I thought the rig out you wore with Parky was bad enough. Oh, I'm... yeah. Well, I've had a thing about clothes for a long time. Men's clothes haven't really changed much since the 30s. Look, look at your suit. You could be in a 1937 movie, couldn't you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not putting you down. It's a very nice suit. But you know the lapel thing and the uh, double-breasted and a nice pair of trousers and... Oxford shoes, you know, you could be in a 40s or a 30s move. So I thought, let's cheer the place up a bit here. <laughs> you know, the only thing is, when you sit in your granny's couch, you disappear. You know? <laughs> but it's good, I like it. <laughs> you want to do a twirl for me? You want to do a twirl? Stand up and do a twirl. Stand up and do a twirl. This is Mr. Do you, know, the only, do you know, the only thing I have to say about that is it looked better on the window. <laughs> I, no, models usually take it off. <laughs> Don't drive them wild completely. Come back, come back. Come back. It's okay, it's just a suit. How are you then? You're just back from Australia. How long were I, you there? Yesterday, I came back yesterday. I was only there for a week. How long did uh, you have to be Pamela and her kids are out there. And I went to see them, say hello. For a week? Yeah, the kids keep forgetting who I am, you see. <laughs> To cry and stuff, especially Amy. She's only nine months old, and she she'd no idea. She's been away for like a month and a half, and that's about a sixth of her life or something. <laughs> and, and so you know, she cries when I come in. You know, well, who's, there's a man in here, and uh, so I have to go and check them up. I did it before. I went to the Bahamas for a day once. I just because they were there. You know, she was filming Pamela, and she took the children with her, and so I, I just went. It was great. You must be mad to go to Australia for a week, though. Really. It's, it's very mad. weird. Just now I feel kind of strange. I'm kind of... Yeah, it's all right, son. Settle down. You're on the Late Late Show. You're in your... Oh, it's good. It's right. a nice yeah. feeling, you know. It's a kind of... Talk to me about living in France, for heaven's sake. Why so? It's the oddest thing. I was... Uh, I had a lot of writing to do this year. And I... Pamela was going to Australia and New Zealand to work. But I... This is Pamela Stevenson, with whom I share my life and uh, it's a funny you know she's we're not married so i can't say she's my wife and uh, and it's funny you don't have, we don't have a name for right. that yes isn't it odd my this, do my you know this in friend my my lover my lover that would do yes, yes. and uh, yes. now if i was wearing a suit like that i would say my lover it would sound better but uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> I think about that. I do, and do you know something? I think about that. Do you know in Sweden they have a word, it's a sambo. And in Swedish that's your, your partner, a sambo. Imagine, I mean I'd get publicly hanged if I called him, she would do it. It's a... Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, she was going to do all this work and it was winter. Uh, d over here, and I thought, well, let's. I was going to buy a house in Spain and spend some time there and be windswept and interesting and exotic oh. and do this writing. And then I met a friend who had a house in France in a vineyard and said, Would you like to rent it for a while? So I sit there, uh, ostensibly writing stuff. Where? In, in Perpignan. Well, it's near Perpignan, it's a place called Collure. 
in the eastern Pyrenees near the Spanish border. And do you know French? Yeah, I know bits of French. I can get by. I'm the only English speaking, well, if you call what I speak, English. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, so I have trouble everywhere with my language anyway, you know, absolutely. Every I have trouble in Scotland being understood. <laughs> And, and so in, in France, I can get by. I know enough to get by from my school stuff, and I bought some cassette tapes and I learn my stuff. I do little lessons. And what do you do all day, Billy? I sit and write and write wait, for, wait for the muse to come upon write me. Write comedy, do you? I write little poems, and I'm writing a children's poetry book and and bits of stuff like that, you know. But you're, I mean, you say you live in a vineyard. You're not even drinking this. Way. I don't. No, I've gone from wino to living in a vineyard. <laughs> It's, it's extraordinary. I don't drink. Can I? I walk in the mountains now. I, I've become extremely weird, and it's okay. The only other English-speaking person in the village is Sting, and, uh, and he's only a poster in a shop, you know. <laughs> and he's advertising Levi's, and so I go down in the morning, I buy my bread, and I go, hi, Sting, and he never bloody answers me. <laughs>